Hi, Mary so, Ellen. Yeah, hi. This is Jamie Allen. Hi. How are you? Fine. So some of the exhibition photographs are your work in Turkey and Europe, and um, it's right after you've gotten that Fulbright scholarship in 1965. Okay. Uh, what was the most rewarding part of that experience of receiving that Fulbright? Well, I mean, it was my first, uh, well, one of my early opportunities just to be able to go out and shoot pictures, you know, and, and have, you know, with, in, in a foreign country, which was fantastic, you know. Was it easy to adapt your style of photography to those that different kind of country and cultures? Yeah, I mean, I've never had a, a problem with that. I just go out and take pictures. Excellent. Um, so along the lines of taking pictures, one of the things our audience is always interested in, in is what kind of camera you use. So can you well, tell us what you preferred in the 60s? I think, I, I'm just trying to remember, it was so long ago. I think I used a Leica and a Nikon. It was all uh, 35 millimeter then. It's, I hadn't started working in medium format yet. Excellent. Um, in 1969, you also were able to publish your first Bread and Life magazine. At least that's the best of my research. It was, it was, it was 1969. So how did that opportunity come across? Well, I was very excited, of course. You know, It was like a big deal for me. Well, actually, the first magazine I worked for was Look. It, it was like a picture magazine, like it's very similar to Life. And I had an assignment to photograph Fellini on the set of Satyricon. So I went off and did that, and then I went on to do photographs in a, a, a center in London working with, with drug addicts. And once that was published, then life started to call me also. So, so when was the moment that you had knew that you really made it as a photographer? Well, you, one never feels one made it. <laughs> you still don't feel like you've no, made it? No, you never feel. You're only as good as the next thing you do, really. So you never feel, oh, I made it, you know. It's bad to feel that you made it. You have to feel you want to go on and do better and do more. Excellent. The London Junkies series is also something that we're showing work from. Well, that was the assignment I did for Look. That was a, a story I suggested to them. So um, I heard about it from a journalist that came through to Italy on the set of Satirica. And but strangely enough, I just had a phone call from Giuseppe Rotuno and his wife, Graciolina, because I have that, the picture of Fellini that I shot while I was working um, on that film is now on the cover of an Italian magazine, La Repubblica. So, so they were very excited because I saw that picture. And Rotuno shot the cinematographer for, for Satyricon. And we're, I became friends with him and his wife. We're still friends. So they called me. They just, they just called, hey, we saw the picture of, you know, for Satyricon on the cover of uh, or La Repubblica. So, anyway, so w once, you know, once Life saw the pictures published, then they called me. So that, that's sort of how it happens, isn't it? Right. I mean, the subjects that are more visual are the ones that I would want to do. So, so name a few of those. Huh? Name a few of those. Like, what would you have well, like, to like do? Well, like the circus, or, you know, in, in Indian circus, or the prostitutes in Bombay, or... or um, even the London junkies are on the set of, of satirica and more visual. Right. I mean, I think uh, feminism is something that's more, um, uh, it, it, it's a literary subject. It's something you write about. It's hard to visualize it. Right. So if so, along those lines, you're talking about photographing things that are very visual. And I'm thinking again about the London junkies series. Some people would say that maybe those images are a little bit off-putting. Um, well, you know, I don't think that the thing, those images should be all petty. I think that they're things people need to look at. And so, I mean, I, I photograph things that are very beautiful to look at, and I also photograph things that, like the circus, is beautiful to look at, but I also photograph things that may be tougher to look at, which I think people should look at. So perhaps would you say that your goals... What are your goals for that project then? Is your shaping which project? Is your shaping the ideas for a project like London Junkies? Well, I thought it was an important, you know, sociological story. It, people should look at it. Excellent. So, I guess I want to ask a fairly broad question, and I'm curious: what was the most rewarding experience that you've had as a photographer? 
That's an impossible question. It is an impossible it's question. It's all rewarding. It's all rewarding. I mean, I just came, I just finished working for a, a year for Novartis doing a project where I traveled all around the world photographing health healthcare, global healthcare. And my, my I picked a theme, which was children. And it was global healthcare of children. And it was a fantastic assignment. You know, it was amazing. It, it was, a, you know, a commercial assignment, and yet it was very humanistic. And so I could do it in a way that was, that was a fantastic year. So I have to say that was one of the best years of my life. But then I've done other projects that were amazing, like the circus or like the prostitutes in Bombay or, or like, you know, uh, uh, Ward 81, uh, living in a ward with women that were mentally ill or many, many things. But I have to say, as a year, this has been the most rewarding year for me, having the opportunity to do this, you know, these stories about global health. And it's made me decide I'd like to devote more, much more time the rest of my life photographing, you know, stories about medicine. Excellent. Well, hopefully we can all have such a rewarding life. That Thanks. things just keep getting better. I'm glad I became a documentary photographer. Yeah. You know, I can say I picked a profession that I love, and I, I'm happy about that. Excellent. And I wish people had more respect for documentary work, it, because I think it's fine art. I think any work that's really great work is fine art, whether it's conceptual or whether it is um, alternative process or whether it's landscape or whatever. If it's great work, it, it, it's, it's art. I think people give a, a really a hard time to documentary work because they don't regard it as art, and I think it is art. I would, I would agree. So, anyway. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.